Hello! Have you ever asked yourself how plastics were originally discovered? I mean, they don't exactly grow on trees. Or do they? You will find answers to these questions, including spectacular experiments about the history of plastics, in this video. This history is divided in three parts. First, there are naturally occurring plastics. Second, there are semi-synthetic plastics, that are chemically modified naturally occurring plastics. And third, there are fully synthetic plastics, that are entirely made by humans. Before we start with part 1, however, we need to answer the question, what plastics are. The broadest definition, which I prefer, is that plastics are any material made out of large molecules, also known as polymer molecules. Sometimes that definition is narrowed down to synthetic or semi-synthetic materials, but that makes it just unnecessarily complicated in my opinion. That brings us immediately to the first part of the video, which is naturally occurring plastics. So according to the broadest definition, a piece of wood could also be called plastics, because it is mainly made out of the large polymer molecules, cellulose and lignin. That makes sense, because plant fibers are also very tear resistant, just like any other plastic, as you can see in the first part of this series. Your hair and skin is also made out of plastic, according to that definition. So we as humans have been using plastic in the form of wood, leather or horn for as long as we exist, which is about 200,000 years. The very first plastic material that was actually made by humans is birch pitch. The oldest samples of this plastic found are roughly 80,000 years old, and I will show you how you can make it right now. First we need a whole lot of birch bark that we can collect from birch wood. Then you need to put it into a metal container with a lid. The metal container needs a hole in the bottom and beneath that hole I need a small tin to collect the product. In order for this to work, the small tin needs to be surrounded by a lot of sand or soil to protect the product from burning. Now all we need to do is light a fire surrounding the tin for like two to three hours. My first attempt doing this failed because the small tin got too hot, but after repeating it in a real fire pit, I got a lot of product. This was used by the Neanderthals as a clue for various tools. This brings us to the second part of the video, which are semi-synthetic plastics. Natural rubber has been used by humans since 1600 BC to create various shapes with it. You can get it by pouring some rubber tree milk into a flat dish and letting it dry. This is however a soft and unstable material which is relatively useless. It became really useful in 1844 when Charles Goodyear invented a process called vulcanization to turn the natural rubber into a more useful product. To show you what I mean, let's compare the properties of raw and vulcanized natural rubber. Raw rubber easily sticks to itself and even thicker pieces become easily deformed when you tear on them. Vulcanized rubber no longer sticks to itself and it always springs back into the original shape. This is because the polymer chains have been connected to a single molecule by so-called disulfide bridges as shown in the graphic. Now we get to my favorite part of the video which is another really famous semi-synthetic plastic. It's not only famous because it was so useful, but also because it was so dangerous. What I am talking about is of course cellulose nitrate. It was discovered by Christian Friedrich Schönbein in 1846 when he spilled a mixture of nitric and sulfuric acid on his kitchen table. In order to avoid getting caught by his wife, he wiped it up with a cotton cloth and after washing it, put it on the stove to dry. It spontaneously caught fire, leading to the discovery of gun cotton. That is because the acid mixture included a lot of oxygen in the already quite flammable cellulose. So let's compare how well the two can burn. Here we have some burning regular cellulose and here's some nitrated cellulose. That was only like 10 grams so now let's see if we use 50 times as much. 
much better already. Please don't repeat that at home. After having that much fun, we get to the third part of the video, which are fully synthetic plastics. The first one was only discovered around 60 years later after the discovery of gun cotton in 1907 by Leo Bakeland. From the name you can probably guess that I'm talking about Bakelite. This was the first large molecule that was actually made by humans starting from small molecules which are phenol and form aldehyde in this case. Those are both quite nasty and toxic chemicals and in order to make the Bakelite I need to mix them in some acetic acid. To start the reaction I add some sulfuric acid from a distance to avoid getting splashed by nasty chemicals. This produces quite a hard and brittle material however if you compress it during the reaction you get a really useful product that was used for a lot of things like cell phones, light switches etc. in the past. After that discovery it still took another 13 years until Hermann Staudinger in the year 1920 published an article where he explained that plastics consist out of large molecules. This is considered the foundation of today's plastics chemistry and for that he got the Nobel Prize. Now from this point on a lot of plastics and methods for manufacturing them were discovered which are all completely spectacular and fascinating. But I don't have time for that in this video and most of these methods are still used today so I will explain all of that in an upcoming video of this series on plastics. Then I will also explain what this has to do with one of the world's strongest bases and how this is linked to another popular chemistry youtuber called NerdRage. So if you don't want to miss it make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. If you enjoyed the video leave a like, thanks to Ricarda for doing the editing and thanks to you for watching.